Good morning. Welcome to the July 13, 2022 Tulare County Planning Commission. Information re uh, concerning the following agenda item is available for public consideration during normal working hours at the Resource Management Agency, Permit Center 5961 South Mooney Boulevard, Visalia, California. The staff will assist in answering questions. For further information about the Planning Commission, see the last page. All public hearings are scheduled for certain times or soon thereafter the matter can, can be heard. All non-timed items will cons be considered following the public hearings or when time permits. Persons, persons wishing to speak at any of the agenda items who have made a political contribution of more than $250 to any commissioner in the last 12 months must indicate this when speaking. To join a meeting by Zoom, enter Zoom webinar 982-7528-0567. And password 339079 or use a QR code below. To provide public comment, use a Q&A feature and provide your name and an agenda item number. To join the meeting by telephone, dial 669-900-9128. Enter the webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079. To provide public comment, press star 9 to raise your hand and star 6 to mute or unmute when called upon. You will be connected to the conference room to address the Planning Commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of the meeting. This meeting can be viewed on the Planning Commission's meetings, Tulare County main page website. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comment at, at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited to, at the discretion of the chair. In order to be considered by the Planning Commission, testimony on public hearing items must be given at the time scheduled for the public hearing. As a courtesy to those in attendance, please turn off or place in alert mode all cell phones. In compliance with the American with Disabilities Act, if you need special assistance to participate in this meeting, please contact Resource Management Agency at 559-624-7000. You will hear a lot of that over and over today. Roll call. McElroy, she informed us that she would be absent for today. Millies? Here. Brown? Here. Diaz? Here. Whitlatch? Here. Lehman? Here. Aguilar? Here. And Aliman? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is a time for public comment. At this time, members of the public may can comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to participate in today's public comment via Zoom webinar, including listening to the meeting and providing public comment, please enter <coughs> the Zoom webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339-079 or use the QR code. You will be connected to the boardroom to address the Planning Commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on live audio stream and will be included in the audio recordings of the meeting. This meeting 
can be viewed by the Planning Commission's meetings to Larry County main page website. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon a Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited at the discretion of the Chair. In order to be considered by the Planning Commission, testimony on public hearing items must be given at the time scheduled for public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment at this time? Okay, seeing none, we will close the public comment and we will move on to the approval of the June 22nd, 2022 uh, minutes of the Planning Commission. Ed Diaz will make a motion to accept the minutes for June 22nd, 2022, as presented. Wayne Millies, I'll second the motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Minutes past seven zero vote. Thank you. We'll move on to the consent calendar. Action on all, all items in this section will be taken with one motion and vote unless anyone wishing to discuss any of any one of these items uh, requests that it be pulled from consent calendar and held over for such discussion. The consent calendar is an untimed item may be taken up at any time during the course of the, today's meeting as time allows. We only have the one item on here, which is an extension of time on PSB 19083. Mr. Chair, I'll need to abstain. I was the land consultant for the company that secured this property. Does he need to? Uh... No, not for this one. Okay, all right. Okay. Unless there's going to be a discussion. Unless there's a discussion? Yes. Okay. So is there anyone uh, wanting to discuss this item or be? Then if there isn't, then we'll go ahead and entertain a motion to accept. Wayne Millies, I'll make a motion to approve a two-year extension of time for the conditionally approved special use permit PSP 19-083 to June 24, 2024. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Abstain. Whitlatch? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passes 6-0 with one abstain. With one abstention? Okay. All right, we move on to the parcel map public hearings. Action on all parcel maps in this section of the agenda will be heard in one public hearing unless anyone wishing to discuss any one of these items requests that it be pulled for separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any item unless requested. In any case, there will be a separate vote on these items. If you wish to participate in the today's public comment via Zoom webinar, including listening to the meeting and providing public comment, please enter Zoom webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079. You'll be connected to the boardroom to address the Planning Commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of the meeting. Timer will be set to three minutes, so please adhere to this time limit. So there are two, two items. Um, does anyone wish to have either of these two pulled for separate consideration? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a comment. Although we share the same last name for parcel map A, 
this person is unknown to me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we will open the public hearing if uh, anyone wishes to make a comment on any of these items. Okay, seeing none, we will close the public hearing and we will um, take each item independently to, for the vote. Since he's not related, I guess you can Okay, I can make a motion. This is Dennis Lehman. I'd like to make a motion to approve the categorical exemption consistent with California Environmental Quality Act. I'd like to approve the categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Act, uh, Quality Act, CEQA, and the state quality CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, uh, California Code Regulations, Section 15301, Class 1, pertaining to existing facilities and conditional <clears throat> uh, approval of the tentative map number TPM 22-001 with final uh, parcel map waiver request. Commissioner Brown, I'd uh, like to second. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion has passed 7 0. Okay, then we'll go to item B. Uh, Carlos Solomon, um, I motion to approve categorical exemptions consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Section 15301, Class 1, pertaining to the existing facilities, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to the new construction and or conversions of small structures, and Section 15305, Class 5H pertaining to minor alterations in the land use limitations and conditionally approved special per use permit number PSP. Wait, which one Dude, are you Chair, uh, yeah, I think you're down one. If you go back up to item B at the top of the page on the blue agenda sheet, we're on uh, tenant parcel map PPM 22-003. That's what I was reading. <laughs> it's okay. No worries. You're just getting a head start. Yeah, I thought that's what I was reading. This one. Yeah. So it's item B, tentative parcel map number PPM 22 dash 003. Again, approve a categorical <laughs> exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations, Section 15301, Class 1 pertaining to the existing facilities and conditionally approved tentative parcel map PPM 2203 with parcel map waiver parcel map required to record. Is there a second? Just Wayne Dillies, I'll second. second the motion. Wayne is taller. Uh, he can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call, please. Millie? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion has passed 7 to 0. It's uh, interesting on these numbers. Uh, the one yeah. we just. <laughs> it's not. Wait a minute. <laughs> PPM 22003 and PSP 22003. All right. Um, we're moving on to the public hearing. Uh, to members of the public, if you wish to participate in today's public comment via a Zoom webinar, please enter your Zoom webinar ID 982 7528. 
0567 and password 339079. You will be connected to the boardroom to address the Planning Commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of this meeting. The timer will be set to three minutes, so please adhere to this time limit. That concludes the instructions for today's public hearing. So we have special use permit number PSP 22-003. Good morning, Chairman Aguilar and the commissioners. My name is Tim Tim Chi, and I'm a planner with the county's uh, resource management agency. Before you is uh, categorical exemptions and the conditional approval of special use permit number 22-003 to allow a third residence to be occupied by family members or workers on a two acre parcel located in AE20 zone, which is exclusive agricultural 20 acre minimum. And it is subject to the rural valley lands plan. It's not moving to the next slide. Ah, the other way around. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Here is the vicinity map. Uh, the subject site is approximately eight miles east of Danuba, and it is located at 42398 Road 152, Orosi, California, 93647, and uh, the APN number is 035-020. Dash zero three nine. It is on the east side of Road One Fifty Two and approximately one mile north of Avenue Four Sixteen. Here are the aerial and the existing zoning maps. The subject site is zoned AE Twenty and uh, contains one existing residence, two existing mobile homes septic systems, propane tanks, and the domestic well. Surrounding parcels are zoned AE20 and the AF, which is foothill agriculture, and contain vacant lands and orchards. The county, environment, in, the county Environmental Health Services Division, County Public Works Engineering Division, Terrier County Fire Department, and the Building Code Enforcement have responded to the consultation request. This is the site plan. Per section 9.6 of the county's zoning ordinance, A20 zone allows by right one residence or mobile home for the entire contiguous property owned by one person, fern, partnership or corporation or owned jointly by more than one person, firm, partnership or corporation or any combination thereof. In addition to the residence allowed as described, one additional residence or mobile home for each 20 acres in the entire property will be permitted. Additional residences and mobile homes for use by relatives Farm workers and the employees may be allowed under the use permit procedure set forth in subsection E of section 9.6 of the county's zoning ordinance. The new residence will be occupied by an employee or farm worker. A public notice for the property was mailed to the sur surrounding property owners, and it was also published in the Exeter Sun Gazette, 
with a 13-day public commenting period before today's planning commission, and uh, no comments were received. And it this concludes the staff's report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Tim? Just one question. Yes, sir. Applicant here today. Uh, I don't think I don't think Mr. Azong Zazu is here. And by the way, the applicant only speaks Spanish. So you know, during the course of this uh, the process of this application, we had to communicate with him with a translator. But I don't see the gentleman here. Any yeah. questions? Pretty straightforward. So, okay. the, only, the only thing that I've got is well, the only issue I have is uh, for a, on a third home on these, and usually it's the, a hardship situation on that um, to come in just because you'd like to have a th the third home on your property. I'm sure there's lots of people would love to do that, but that's not the way the zone is. Zoning is allowed. Uh, the more we rubber stamp these without a um, hardship situation, uh, the more often we're going to see these come before us. Uh, we've got that ordinance to pr protect agriculture, and that's kind of our mandate here. Um, I think without a, that's why I asked if the applicant was here, without a underlying hardship situation uh, for a family member that needs to be, you know, on the premises. I find it hard to support these. Do you know if there was a hardship on, on this one? According to what I learned from our system previously, well, actually, I should say there's a total of eight records of uh, code violation. And uh, this is only one remaining. The other seven have been resolved already. And uh, according to our code enforcement, you know everything else and uh, um, the previous payments have been cleared. And uh, I was instructed to you know move forward with this application, but uh, and among these uh, code violations, two of them had to do with abandoned vehicles. Th all others had to do with the employee uh, housing. And uh, as I mentioned, this is the only one remaining. And I think the applicant I was actually instructed to submit an application for the special use permit for this particular purpose. So. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Okay, we're going to go ahead and open the public hearing for this item. If anyone wishes to come forward and, and speak on this, PSP 22 003. I don't see anybody. Go ahead and close the public hearing for PSP 22 003. Are there any other questions of the commission? Uh, Mr. Chair, I will make a second comment here. Um, it, it is a, an existing uh, situ uh, building there, and this is in an effort to bring them into compliance. Um, although I don't necessarily support it, I think uh, um, in this case, I think it probably should go through. That was a motion? No, nope, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, would anybody like to make a motion on this item? No? I'll make a motion to approve a categorical exemption uh, consistent with California Environmental Quality Act and state CEQA guidelines. Uh, pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations, Section 15301, Class 1, um, pertaining to existing facilities. Did I read that already? No. Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of mi to minor alt alterations in the land. Use limitations and conditionally approve. Special use permit, PSP 22-003 subjects to the fire needs and conditions. Wayne Millies, I'll second the motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. 
Whitlatch? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Okay, we move on to special use permit number PSP 22-050. We have Russell here to make a presentation. Um, good morning, Chairman Aguilar and Commissioners. I am Russell Kashua, part of the County's Project Processing Division. Before you this morning, I have a special use permit PSP 22-050 requesting one motion. Approve categorical exemption consistent with the California Quality Environmental Quality Act CEQA and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, Cal Code Regulation Section 15301, Class 1, pertaining to existing facilities, and Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction, and conditionally approve special use permit number 22-050. Um, the property is located on a three acre portion of a 10 acre parcel in the M2 heavy manufacturing zone. This is the vicinity map. The property is located at 22700 Road 196 on the east side of Road 196 and approximately 280 feet north of Avenue 226 west of Lindsay. APN number is 199-190-023. These are the aerial and existing zoning maps. The site is located within the Lindsay Urban Area Boundary and is part of the Lindsay General Plan. The subject site contains approximately 60,000 square foot warehouse used by Randy Nix Custom Welding and Manufacturing Incorporated. The subject site is zoned M2, which is heavy manufacturing. The surrounding properties are all zoned AE40 and contains agricultural and rural residences. Uh, the Tulare County Environmental Health Services Division, the County Public Works Engineering Division, Tulare County Fire Department, and Tulare County Sheriffs were all sent a consultation request. Responses were received with recommended conditions of approval for this project. Before you is the site plan. Um, the applicant proposes an event center or an venue for our private parties and vendors. Events will be scheduled for weekends, Friday through Saturday, uh, Sunday, with setup from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., event hours ranging from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., and cleanup from approximately 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. They expect a maximum occupancy of 250 attendees. Uh, they are proposing live entertainment and alcohol will be provided for guests only and not for sale. Applicant will provide four to six security guards as well as providing nine portable toilets and 10 hand washing sinks. A public notice for the project was mailed to the surrounding property owners and published in the Exeter Sun Gazette with a 10 day public comment period. The county has received seven letters as well as a petition and a letter from the Tulare County Farm Bureau all in opposition to this project. This ends staff report. Do you have any questions for me or the applicant, which is here as well? Anyone have any questions for us? Is there a limit to the use permit that they're applying for? Is there a maximum number of events to be granted every year? Yes, it will be 12. 12. I thought I read that in there. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. Thank you. And it seems like the other ones we are. The other ones we approve, typically they limit the, they don't go past 10 o'clock at night. Yes, and, and, and with our noise ordinance, we um, don't allow um, um, any amplified music after 10 p.m. So generally, the area between 10 p.m. and 12 p.m. is kind of the wind down period where they stop playing music and allow guests time to, you know, kind of leave and, and that type of period. So it's not technically cleanup time yet, but it is still within the event period but it's there's no more music but yeah that is part of the conditions as well that no amplified music will be allowed after 10 p.m. anyone else okay at this time we will open the public hearing for special use permit PSP 22-050 
And if there's anyone wishing to speak on this item, uh, there will be Commissioner, we have um, the Farm Bureau on online if they, they would like to speak. If okay, we we'll, let we'll them go, go ahead first. and listen to them first. Okay. Through the chair, it does appear the sheriff is here, and we'd like to hear their comments as part of the presentation while, while well, he's here. So we'll, we'll listen to the sheriff, and then we'll go to the uh, okay. Farm Bureau. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lieutenant David Dela Cruz uh, with Tulare County Sheriff's Office, and I'm here in regards to um, this permit. Uh, in regards to the calls for service that we have received as in the sheriff's office, we have uh, received uh, 20 calls for service as of 2019. Nine of them were from 2022. And 2021, we've had five, uh, 2020, two of them, and 2019, four. Out of those calls for service, they have ranged from loud music, assaults, underage drinking, public intoxication, hit and run, sexual assault, medical requests, domestic violence, missing juvenile, along with, uh, we've had several calls where security guards requested our assistance to clear the area or to assist them with fights. That's it. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> no, but it's helpful. Right. Thank you. Oh, one last thing also, um, uh, in regards to the applicant, uh, I would like him to know or them to know that uh, if this does get approved, we want them to uh, keep in mind that uh, they will be cited if they pass the decibels in regards to the loud music, uh, even though they would have a permit. Uh, if they are in violation of the county ordinance, uh, they would be cited as well. All so right. these were all events that were not approved, obviously, because it wasn't. Uh, that I do not know if he had a permit or not uh, at the time of the calls for service. But, you know, again, if this does uh, get approved, we want them to be aware that even though they do have a permit, they would still be, they, they are still subject to being cited. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's one, uh, one a month. Is that what the proposal is? Well, one event? 12 per year is what? 12 per year. 12 per year. So were you called out more than one time in a month? Uh, that I do not know. I, I can tell you that uh, just in 2022, we've had nine of them. And uh, we're just in. Uh, in, ju in July, <laughs> so yeah, they've had uh, a few within within a month. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, um, there was one temporary use permit that was approved last year. It was PSB 21-107, which was applied for in October. So they were allowed um, four events last year. They were allowed four events last year. They were allowed the four events through the temporary use permit. <laughs> Uh, Lieutenant, how many did you say in 2021? Because there were only four events. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, according to our calls for service for 2021, we had five. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're still waiting on her response. We can continue. Okay. Then uh, we'll go ahead. We have opened the public comment period. Uh, so uh, I think through the chair. Typically, we allow the applicant to speak first and then okay. the others in opposition to follow. Please state your name and address. Thank you. Uh, my name is Gilberto Baca, and I'm the applicant for this permit, special use permit. In regards to, um, to the events, uh, this is not public events that we're having. This is, we're a farm labor contractor company, and we have also educational events uh, for their families. We have uh, trainings. Uh, sometimes after the training, we have some music on. Um, in regards to, to, the, to the sheriff's uh, reports, um, sometimes they get called like around 7 o'clock in the afternoon for even uh, the small music that we have right there outside when we're working. And they will show up by 7 o'clock before even it gets dark, uh, saying that it's too loud. Uh, so, so all the all the calls that we that he's been getting is not especially events, public events. They're not for hire events. They're um, they're either co-workers in house. Um, I guess you can say events, but not not events for hire outside. 
that's in reward for, for that. Um, also, the, the three closest residences, the three closest houses, um, I, I talked to them. I've been talking to them since, since ever I know them uh, to make sure that we're good neighbors with them. One is on the north side of the property, uh, which is not on the list of the opponents. Uh, the other two, they're right on the south side um, on the property after the, the orange block. Then another one is <coughs> across the street um, from, the, from, the, from our place. And then one is on, on the other side, a little bit more to the, north, uh, to the south side, and they're not opposing to it. In fact, I was talking to one of them as, as, as I was I'm driving by, this, I mean driving this way, and he said that he absolutely doesn't hear anything to the inside of the house. Uh, he said there's sometimes on the outside, um, but not, not to be disturbance. Um, so I just wanted to get those, those phone calls that the sheriffs are getting. Um, they're not for events that we're having, that we're having for, for basically for hire. Did he state his address? I don't remember. 20, uh, the address is 22700 Road 196, Lindsay. 93247. Any questions of the applicant? Uh, yeah, Mr. Bach, have, have you been in contact with any of the. I'm sorry? Mr. Bach, have you been in contact with any of the, the people that are in opposition to this and had discussions with them about your uh, activities? Only with one, only with one. And I did, um, I don't recall the name, but I think she's, she's here on the list. Mm -hmm. um, and I did. Um, committed that we're going to be, if we get all the permits or everything in line, uh, I did already order doors. Because this is, this is not an outside facility event. This is an enclosed uh, 1,500 square feet facility uh, that we already um, ordered doors to, to, to enclose it. So absolutely, there's going to be no noise coming outside. Um, and I did commit it to her that we're in the process of, as soon as we get those doors, we'll get them installed. And um, and I think she was okay with that. How large is your building? The, the, the actual building is almost 70,000 square feet. Okay. And, and we're using only 15,000 square feet for, for this uh, educational as well as, as um, entertaining and events. And you get your 250 people in that area? Oh, you can fit a lot more than 250. Because it's enclosed 15,000 15, square feet, and then the, the party on the outside is another uh, like 25,000 square feet, plus an access of uh, 179 mark pavement park spaces, not interrupting the road at all. This is all private property on a 10-acre block that we are using almost two acres just for parking, um, 15,000 square feet enclosed, and about twenty thousand, and about twenty thousand square feet patio area in front of the enclosed uh, uh, facility. So, so if you see on on, on this, you can see um, uh, where that. Can you can you? So so. You, Go ahead and go back to the microphone, please. No private events, no sales of alcohol, and it, it is a second fence within the boundary fence line. Question? Okay. Can they bring their own alcohol? Can they bring their own alcohol? If we have um, events from outside, if the permit allows it, yes. No sales. The sheriff had uh, commented there was an assault. Are you aware of that? Uh, no, I was not aware of that. You, you, they, were, they did not report that to you? 
I was not aware of that. Was it no. inside the building or outside the building? Well, that yeah, this yeah. is the first yeah, time that I don't I, know. No, I just don't know. I just don't know. I, I don't know if it came from that. I don't think it was from our place because most of the um ninety nine percent of the time I'm 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 there during the event, either me or uh, or him. Um he's my partner. Uh and and this and then we we have not heard any assaults. So there th there is another there is another um uh, another place where they make where they make uh, like another venue i haven't i never been there but it's right across the street on on the north side less than one mile away but i i don't know I, uh, what's your partner's name uh, crescentio campus okay any other questions of the applicant no is there anyone else uh that is for the project that would like to speak the remainder of the building being used for? What is the remainder of the building being used for? You're occupying 15,000 square feet of a 60,000 square foot building. What's for, the remainder? For manufacturing welding. Okay. And on the back, another three acres that you see on the back, way uh -huh. in the back, it's our uh, uh, yard for the trucks, Storage for clips. Forklifts, tractors. We're a farmers also, mm -hmm. um, so tractors, forklifts, mm -hmm. and and general ag stuff that we that, that we have. And and on the front, on the front, close to the to the parking lot, it's uh, empty offices. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's only one engineer working at a 8,000 square feet building. <laughs> like he just has an office there. Everything, office. yeah. Uh, well, uh, he, everything else is empty. Okay. Thank you. Everything else is empty. Thank you. Was this a packing house at one time for oranges? It's also it's under the the GBN for sales. It's, it's actually my 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 broker's license name, and uh, we had a small. We still have. We don't use it hardly anything. Only for our fruit. Uh, <laughs> it's a small facility that we run fruit. That's on part of the other, the other uh, square for each of the building, and it's under my my broker's license name as well, which is on GBM Fruit Sales. Any other questions? Uh, Wing, did you want to ask the lieutenant about that assault, or someone who brought that up? Well, the applicant is not aware of it. So I'm wondering, was it on site or off site? Do you know, officer? Yes, sir. Uh, every single call for service was for that property. Uh, it was either inside the building or outside the building on the premises. Out of assaults, there were five assaults there. Um, that's not including the, um, the sexual assault along with uh, six of those, uh, also six calls were made by security. One was on behalf of the owner and one was on behalf of the groom of a wedding where they requested to shut down the party because it was just too large. In regards to the times, the earliest time that we have seen and according to uh, our calls for service was at 8.42 at night and as late as 1.37 in the morning regards to the loud noise, uh, fights, hit and run, uh, the underage drinking, and the other uh, uh, issues that they had. Those were all on site? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to comment on for the project? <clears throat> Seeing none, then uh, you can have a seat and we'll move on to those that, that are opposed. Um, you'll be limited to three minutes, and please no repeat information as the, diff as the different people want to speak. Is Andrea still alive? No. <clears throat> we have the written comments, so it's on the record. Good morning. My name is Donald Rourke. My wife Kathy and I live about one half mile away from this side at 22344 Road 198. 
I'm here today to object to this uh, issuing of this permit. Numerous events have occurred at this site over the past two years, so these objections aren't based upon some perception of what's going to happen. As you have just heard, it's already happening. These events are not just employee <coughs> meetings, they're weddings, they're parties, they don't start usually until seven or eight at night, and they go well into the night. I have three main reasons for objecting. One is the noise, two, the lateness of the events, and three, the frequency of the events. First, page four of the staff report states that this project is not noise sensitive. I thoroughly disagree. The events at this location on most all occasions have DJs, announcers, bands. They're not, they don't have little tiny speakers, as may have been suggested. These speakers are brought in in trailers. I did a little research. Speakers like this produce from 100 to 120 decibels at the site. Uh, they can expand out to 80 decibels even a half a mile away. So when um, the sound is noticeable both inside my home and outside with all the windows shut, and uh, I have six inch walls and double pane windows. I find the section labeled noise on page four of this staff report out of touch with the realities of living in the country. Noise is a concern for my family and, and the many neighbors, as you can see by the petitions you received. Why should rural residents endure what city residents firmly uh, uh, reject? Late night events, they've occurred uh, well past 10 p.m., well past 11 p.m., as was reported by the sheriff. The frequency of the events. In 2022, we've been counting. There's been 35 events at this site. I can assure you these are not employee orientation events. These are parties, weddings, limousines, people dressed up. They look like, some of them look very nice. But in addition to the dates described in, that you've received in your staff report, you can add June 17th, 18th, 25th, 26th, July 2nd, July 9th, and 10th of this year. The staff report is silent about this. In fact, page two of the cover page that you're looking at says no events will occur until a special use permit is, is approved. This clearly misstates what's actually happening. These events have never ceased in two years, well past the four event that uh, permit that was issued last year. So how can this happen? How can a business like this operate a permit continuously for two years in Tulare County without a permit? Where is the respect for public policy? Where is respect for your neighbors? I offer a final prediction, which is my opinion. Whether you folks approve this or not, there are going to be 20 or 30 more events at this site, and they're going to be paid commercial events. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Any questions? I've got it. No. no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kathleen Lemstra. I also go by Katie. Um, my husband and our family, we live at 20199 Avenue 216 in Lindsay. Thank you for allowing us time to speak today. It's my understanding that this applicant does not currently have a permit to host events. As Mr. Rourke stated, we have logged 35 events since January 1st of this year. I have a copy of the list if you would like to see it. With party barns popping up all over, this venue is setting an example for others that want to host large, loud gatherings that rules need not be followed. There is another um, event site located several hundred yards away from this one that we often hear also. We have safety concerns. Um, we have seen people walking between these two event sites and crossing the roads late at night on our dark country roads. We have teenagers that are driving home from school events late at night at times and we're very concerned for their safety and hearing some of the things that the officer stated it disgusts me many people in our area have large investments in residences and farm properties 
the excessive number of loud parties from this venue are causing serious concern for the value of our properties. In conclusion, our restful weekends have been replaced by sleepless nights due to a facility being run illegally, irresponsibly, and lacking common decency and respect for our nearby residents. I would like to say that I am the one who spoke to Mr. Baca. I reached out to Mr. Nix, the owner of the property. I called him and asked him to have his renter please quiet down. I had no response from Mr. Nix. He gave my phone number to Mr. Baca and Mr. Baca called me. Thank you. Any questions? Pretty clear. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. I am Bill Lempstra. That was my wife, Katie. Address is 20199 Avenue 216, Lindsay, California. Um, thank you for allowing us to be here and voice our concerns. Uh, we don't take this matter lightly. We know that everybody needs a part, a place to get together and gather and enjoy each other's company. You know, we all need to get and work together through this in Tulare County. This is a big county. You have to make this work. My question is, is how can this thing continue to operate when it does not have a permit? As she stated earlier, it's 33 events. I go out at night to change water on a Tulare ranch, and I see the events going. Lights are blaring. It's usually 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and it's going hot and heavy. You know. So who is going to regulate this? Who's in charge? The one that we've been given to is Tulare County Sheriff's Department. They are the ones that are getting these calls at 10, 30, 11, 30, 1.30 in the morning. And we're now asking them to be compliance officers to a venue that does not want to or isn't willing to be complicit to the rules and the codes that are potentially going to be in a permit. Well, these, sh these sheriff's officers are not too excited about walking into an area where there's a couple hundred people that have been drinking for three or four hours and telling them to shut down their party. Are we going to ask our sheriffs to do this? I just see it as a bad deal. And my final thought is, people have lived in this community 30, 40, 50 years. They've raised their families in this area. They've invested in homes. They've invested their businesses here. They've paid their taxes. They've worked within a law-abiding way. And they've generally got along through common sense and goodwill. And now all of a sudden we have this, as my wife said, not 12 parties a year. This weekend, there was one Saturday and another one Sunday because I went out both days because I had to change water. And they were both going. So with that being said, who is going to regulate this? Who's in charge of this? How are we going to make that this is complicit? They have proven that. They haven't been able to do it, so now is it on us as citizens to call? Nobody likes to do that. We don't want to get along with our neighbors. So those are just a few questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions? I'd like to Thank respond you. just quickly. Uh, we're, we are seven private citizens appointed by the Board of Supervisors, and so we're not elected. We're uh, not to anybody, you know, we make our own decisions. We understand your pain, but we will make a decision and we can enforce it. Probably more power than the Sheriff's Department. Okay. So keep that in mind. We're going to take care of it. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Where is that other facility, the other party? Where is that? South, uh, of, south of this? It would be due west. It's west of it. West and a little bit north. So it's not on the same road. It, it would be on a side road, it would, were not walking. on 196, that yellow road there. It would be more to the west on a side road. So people are walking from one side to the other through the archers or what? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is the other, is, is, uh, officer, uh, is the Sheriff's Department aware of that other facility? Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, I do not know at this time. I didn't uh, check the calls for service of that address. 
but I can tell you there there are other parties in that area as well. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Hello. My name's Marlis Brownfield, and I live at 22105 Road 203. And I've lived there for over 50 years with my, with my late husband. We raised our family there, and we've always enjoyed peaceful country life. But that isn't the case anymore. There are loud parties at night, and they go into the early morning hours. And so I just oppose this. Thank you. How many others are going to want to speak? Okay. Good morning. Um, my name is Mike Brownfield. My wife and I, Amy, live about a mile away our, uh, in West Lindsay. Our address is 20110 Avenue 220. And I won't go into too much detail. Uh, I would be echoing what all of the other speakers have said, but this is a problem. And um, I've lived here, in, born and raised in West Lindsay, have lived there for almost 20 years now, and never have I seen anything consistently cause this much trouble come into the area. And I think you guys really need to take a, a good look at this. I also have concerns about how many of these facilities may be very well popping up in the future. In addition uh, uh, to this other facility we talked about that's across the street, it's my understanding that there's even another one, possibly within a mile and a half away to the northwest, that is operating as well. So uh, questions I have is how many of these can be approved? How are they going to be regulated? And it just doesn't seem like it's a good fit in the country to me. It's, it's becoming a problem. Um, while I like to celebrate and go to events with my friends and family, maybe these should be held in town or at other types of facilities, but to be moving them into the rural area, this isn't just a routine type of deal that's going on. These are money-making facilities. And as you can see and hear, it's not 12 times out of the year. People are really taking a good look at this, and I hear about it often, that these guys are making a lot of money. Not necessarily the applicants today, but these facilities in general. I also wanted to talk with you about another angle that I have. I'm a, a farmer, family farmer in the area, and routinely am hired to do work on, on other people's ranches on all four sides distantly from this facility. And with the continuing and ongoing regulations that we're being adjusted to as farmers, oftentimes the work that I have to do is on the weekends and at night. And when these routine parties with this type of people, amount of people that are coming in, it's complicating the rural farm life. And here in Tulare County, I think we all know how many people rely on this and we need to support it and look after it. So I just wanted to say that I oppose this and please take this into consideration. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Hello, my name is Kathy Balaam, and I live at 22032 Road 198 in Lindsay, just down the street from Don and Kathy Rourke. And I didn't come here prepared to say anything and wasn't going to speak, but I, I have to say that this place that we're talking about right now came in after the one on the other side of the street uh, started like probably a couple years later I'm not I can't tell you exact dates but when we first moved out there in 2005 uh, someone else owned the property on the street and they sold it to the people that now occupied on the west side of 196 and they started having these parties and you could hear the loud music clear at my house in the house and I have to sleep with when they when they were having their parties I had to buy a sound machine a white noise machine so that I could sleep without hearing the noise even in my bedroom and this other place is the same thing that we're you know that's on the east side of 196 so I, I have to agree with uh, my neighbors that it's very very annoying thank you very much Thank you. Anyone else? 
No. Does do you want to respond to any of the items? For for the go ahead and state your name again, please. Yeah, Gilberto Baca, an address twenty two seven zero zero road one ninety six. Um, I understand everything. Um, we farm. We're a labor contractors. We deal with many, many growers. I deal with probably all of your neighbors around um, Monte Vista ranches. Uh, well, you name it. We're we're been working with them. Um, in fact, uh, I asked Guy Wallerman, and I'm going to mention him because I know uh, he was he was he was. He, he was called to be into this meeting or he was called to be into um, into the sign the opposite for the opposition and, and he didn't um, just because he wasn't he thought that the noise wasn't it wasn't enough reason for the noise the noise wasn't strong enough to for him to be here um, I did talk to him um, another grower that it's right south of us, probably closer or or, or next to uh to speak to, us. to, speak to us. yeah or or close to to one of them. Uh, he did sign. I talked to him, and about the noise, and he said that the noise was uh, once in a while it was loud, early, and then and then it disappeared. Um, so he's not here either. Because they, they, I understand, and I, I get their point. I completely get their point, um, and I'm not here to be a bad neighbor. I, I'm not here to to annoy anything. Um, what we're asking here for this permit, it's like like you said, uh, if we get a permit, there's there's regulations that we need to follow, and and, and we are gonna follow the regulations, uh, right, right to the point. In fact, that's why we spend almost fourteen thousand dollars on doors uh, to be ready for this permit, uh, and that will take care of the noise for sure. I guarantee that that will be. So, so and 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 going back into the decibels, and and some of the um, and some of the 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 the, the complaints, I guess, uh, it says that you can hear the noise even up to four miles away. When we have, and we can submit those vi mini videos for the decibels that the sheriff department uh, and not that one of the sheriffs, not him, but somebody else that went in or went in, uh, he told us to download an app for the decibels, the same decibels that the sheriff department uses, um, and and focus it on like an, a mini video, focus it on the on the property and record, and we have those recordings. For the for for the personal events that we had, and they they're all within the 60, 57, 60, 62 decibels inside the first fence, not on the property line fence, and then we have those on request of the sheriff's department. So so, I, if you have any other questions. Um, Mr. Baca, the. Uh, the noise uh, we can probably handle. We can, there are ways to get that. We can measure it. We can change it. What really concerns me, though, is your inability and your security's inability to control your your crowd, your people. Uh, we've had nine calls already this year. Um, I don't know what what a person does <coughs> to make people act right, but uh, you know uh, it concerns me because to this point in time, you you haven't been able to control your crowds and. And 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 make the, make it a, a respectable uh, 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 event. Uh, it troubles me. That's that's my issue with it. Yeah, no, I I understand all the all the phone calls, and like he was saying that, I guess there's been phone calls from from even our part of it, two I believe two of them. Um, yeah, one of them I wasn't aware of it. The other one I was. And it's just better to be safe. Like they're saying, better to be safe than sorry. That's why we call to make sure that they take care of the people trying to get the, 
get in trouble more. So that, that was to avoid potential problems. And I think an hour part of it, or, or for us, it's just better. And, and we did call on that one time, or two times basically. Um, it's just better to call before uh, trouble gets bigger. Uh, so that's, that's prevention. Actually, that's, that's, that's prevention uh, instead of letting it go and try not to get noticed and get a bigger problem. So, so we do involve the, the sheriff because we're basically not hiding anything. Uh, and, and that's to prevent something bigger to, hap to be happening. With the number of events that you're having, you're, you're saying those are all private having to do with your company? We, we, we have about 757 up or down employees. And so th they all can use this facility free, or how does that work? So mo most of the times we had uh, three, maybe three weddings from, from family members. In fact, uh, a birthday party for my son, uh, baptism, and... It, so we have this 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 property that we can that we fix for mainly for for ma mainly mainly for trainings and we have proof of insurance people coming in from us workers come insurance people to come in do seminars so when the COVID there was absolutely going back to the two back to in two years we absolutely did not did any events when the COVID season came in absolutely in uh, I can show you, I don't know how I can prove it to you, but there was absolutely no events um, going there during the COVID time, uh, with the exception of one or two trainings that we had chairs every like seven feet apart for training purposes, because every, everywhere was closed and we had to have these trainings for safety purposes. Uh, sexual harassment trainings, supervisor trainings, uh, CPR trainings, we had to have those for, for our own employee safety. And, and that was the only events that we had during that COVID, which is, it was less than two years ago. Any other questions? Uh, well, page 11, and this pretty much is the bottom line. Uh, the, the Planning Commission can approve a, a request for assemblage of people. Uh, for entertainment and educational purposes, um, when it be, can it be shown when it can be shown that approval of said use will not adversely affect nearby residents? So, uh, I guess we need to be more specific. Uh, this 12 events that's that's brand new to you. Sounds like, I mean, you were running up events here, here, there, and everywhere um, over the last year, two, three. Uh, so it seems to me this has to be focused to fixed hours, uh, DB noise limitations, security on site, maximum persons, uh, attendees, alcohol control, drugs, limited hours, and number of other events. Now, if that's not all in place, uh, then you don't know what you're supposed to comply with. So in, in but you also are imposing on the neighbors around you. And you don't know that. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, because it's the sheriff's telling us he's coming out here, there, and everywhere. So uh, we either have to start over on this, in my estimation, with new rules, uh, because I can't support approving what's here. So, so in, in, in fact, on, um, on, on why we started with this uh, uh, temporary permit, it was because we got in trouble by, by doing um, like a little swap meet for people that we know, um, and for also employees and friends of employees that wanted to have, they call it like a pop-up event, and you see those everywhere. Everywhere you see those, like a little mini flea market where um, um, homemade goods are sold or, or food, homemade food are, are, are sell. So we had one of those on, on a Sunday, and that's one of the valuations that we that we had pending on um, on, on for the permit department. So that's how we started to make 
progress on, on, on this. And, and by us applying for this permit, permanent permit, um, we are gonna follow the instructions. And we are gonna make sure that the noise gets control over. Um, if we need to have more securities on, on a public event that we might have, well, that's something that we need to do. Thank you. A anyone else? No. Did the uh, Farm Bureau ever come back on? Or? Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, through the chair, um, the applicant states that he wasn't aware with a lot of the noise and sound, um, but with his approval of the special use permit, the temporary one, um, most of the conditions are very similar to the one that's found in this uh, temporary, in this use permit. Um, so applicant should be aware of at least the noise, maybe not the number of events because they are different between a temporary one and a um, special use permit. But as, as far as like noise and uh, the 65 decibels for sure and then the time frame, those are all written into the conditions of approval for a temporary use permit. Thank you. Uh, I have a, uh, a question regarding public versus private on the assemblages. I mean, it, yes, <coughs> yes. Um, so uh, it's one of the hardest things to monitor on our behalf is if it's a commercial event uh, or not. Um, including nonprofits or religious events, those are things that we do not regulate, uh, except for this noise ordinance we have, and that's through the, uh, the Sheriff's Department's social host ordinance. So, um, and that applies to, to pretty much everybody. <clears throat> so on the public or the private, you know, if he's having a, a private event and it's commercial, th that's what we're talking about here as far as assemblages of people, ordinance and what that's, what is within our regulations and our regulatory power to uh, oversee. That does not regulate the number of assemblages for private purposes for well, his meetings, now, now, Right, exactly. If he's uh, having, a, um, call it private, let's say a commercial, if he's having non-commercial events, uh, then no, there's no regulation in and regards to that. Commercial is they're being paid for the Yes, money. Money is transferring hands. Okay. Anyone else have questions? We do have the Farm Bureau on, on Zoom. We're going to allow her to speak. One All second. Right. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Go ahead and state your name and address for the record, please. Oh. You still there? Trisha, could can you hear us? Can you unmute your mic? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Can you hear me through the computer or through the phone? Because I'm trying on both. Um, I'm really not sure how. We're we're through Zoom though. We don't have a phone line here. Just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> can you still hear me now? Yes. Yes. And. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, we can yeah, hear you. I can hear you. Okay. I got the impression I had been disconnected from the Zoom, so I called on my telephone, so I was unclear how to best respond. I will start again. I'm with the Tulare County Farm Bureau. My address is 737 North Ben Maddox Way by Celia, California, 93292. My name is Tricia Blattler. I'm their executive director. 
the Farm Bureau has traditionally opposed religious <coughs> and entertainment venues of this nature for all of the reasons that have already been excited by both law enforcement and neighboring property owners. I think it really does speak to a larger problem, and I understand that the RMA and the Sheriff's Office uh, under Sheriff Sigley has communicated with me that we are looking to find a way to better address these concerns, because this is just one of many that have both violated temporary use permits and completely disregarded the, the rules that have been set forth for these kinds of establishments. I am not confident that granting this permit with any type of new rules or more stringent conditions will change the behavior of what's been going on in this area. Farm Bureau usually speaks to you know, consistency with the neighboring properties and certainly there's already been a farmer or two speak to the fact that uh, you know, maintaining cultural practices can be difficult. There is also a potential for a statewide pesticide notification regulatory change that's going to make it even more difficult for growers to apply chemicals without a huge amount of additional foresight and notification. I would ask that if a property like this is going to be allowed to have events after hours and on weekends and evenings when they could impact those growers' applications, that they too would have to provide three or four days advance notice of these events to all the surrounding properties. But most importantly, I just think this really is a symptom of a much larger problem. The Farm Bureau gets called several times a year on these types of illegal centers that have been doing these kinds of activities for months, if not years. We ask code enforcement and law enforcement to go out and, and investigate and correct the violations and often it takes years if, if maybe never gets fixed. So I implore you to definitely use this one as an example to create better policy for all of these kinds of centers across the county. Um, I know one commissioner has already stated that the chapter three, section 16, use permit requirements say, you know, you can only provide that permit if an establishment will not be detrimental to the health safety, peace, morals, comfort, and general welfare of persons residing or working in that neighborhood or to the general welfare of the county. I can't see under any circumstance where this facility is going to be complicit. I thank you for your time and I request denial. Any questions of <laughs> Tricia? Thank you, Tricia. All right. This is last, huh? This, uh, yeah, is there, if there's anyone else that's wishing to speak, otherwise we're going to close the public hearing. Okay, seeing none, we will close the public hearing portion of this and turn to the commission for if you have any questions of staff or if you want to discuss. No? Okay. First, yeah, there's no questions, so... We turn to the commission to see if there's an approval or denial or what you want to do. You want to make a motion? Oh, okay. Uh, Wayne Millies, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we deny a category uh, through the chair yes sir. Uh, if we're going to deny yes. or move make a motion to deny uh, we tentatively make that decision at this time and allow staff to make the findings for denial so we'll bring it back date certain if that's the direction so this, so my my verbiage is what the, a tentative denial to be brought back for further um uh, findings by staff for the motion for I'll make denial. a motion that we uh, approve a tentative denial of this application uh, with the recommendation that we send this back to staff for for further findings findings, findings. for denial for denial and uh, Velma what's the next uh, date certain July 27th July 27th uh, date certain will be July 27th 20 
I'll second that motion. Roll call. Mealies? Yes, yes on my motion. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. And Aliman? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to tentatively deny, correct, for findings and return on July 27th. Thank you all. We go to the director's report. Uh, through the chair, Aaron Bach, planning director with the Resource Management Agency. Um, I did want to follow up. We are looking at many different ways to. Um, attack this issue that is uh, coming up more and more uh, recently. Um, Mr. Washam's uh, working with the Sheriff Department to look at an, or an ordinance that will uh, hopefully address some of these uh, concerns and uh, we will be looking to uh, strengthen our use permits and our temporary permits to, to make sure that people who are uh, following the rules, uh, that they do follow the rules, and uh, hopefully that gives us a little bit more teeth and power um, to to restrain some of these activities. Um, it's post-COVID. Uh, it seems to be a change in the atmosphere out there. Uh, there is cash to be had, uh, and, and lots of it from these events. So we're looking to to create wa ways to deter uh, more of this. Um, in the social ordinance right now does deal and address with the noise itself. Um, and the sheriff's been getting a lot of calls and we're hearing more and more about that at the Board of Supervisors meeting. So this is something we're definitely uh, looking into. Um, and hopefully at the same time, you don't want to totally deter business uh, in any form in the county. So it's, you know, weighing those two, two sides of it. <clears throat> the other thing that is difficult uh, from a code enforcement perspective is to know, you know, taking the veracity of the statements of the people making application or not, uh, what, what, whether they are having commercial events or not. Um, you know, how far do we dig into uh, <clears throat> or audit or get warrants to, to find out if their bank accounts, if they're making money with these things or not. So. A lot of things to think about, uh, but we are actively pursuing that. So um, um, we look forward to bringing an ordinance forward that uh, will begin to address uh, some of these issues uh, and give us a little bit more power and teeth to, to take care of it. Sounds like there's others around that area, and this may be the tip of the iceberg in the county. I don't know. But does the sheriff report back to code enforcement? What do you think? No, now, his, historically, um, if you can't. It, we're having more conversations right now. Um, historically, you know, we, we haven't exactly kept each other in the loop vice versa as well, um, especially on our side. I mean, we go out and do some enforcement here, but the the thing is our violation is cleared by coming to you and getting a use permit. So we have to look at that practice as well. Um, but yes, there, as of late, there's a lot more communication between the Sheriff's Department and ours uh, in regards to that. Uh, but no, they're not gonna give us every call, but that's uh, something we could definitely look into as far as how that conversation occurs better uh, in the future. Um, <laughs> but the, 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 the question the sheriff asks when they get there is, do you have a use permit or not, just for starters? So, you know, we don't always get that question ourselves. It's usually at, because the use permit does say it has to be posted on the site. Uh, Aaron, maybe in the process of uh, the staff developing the report, uh, it would just be one step to call the sheriff to, to inquire if there's been uh, calls on this on this uh, address in the past. So we yes, just have uh, that part we, of the report. We, we, we do that. We uh, do that. Yeah, and especially with the temporary permits, uh, okay. more so. We, we didn't do, see anything in the report here. 
generally on the uh, on the temporary permits yes on the assemblages uh, no so the thing is that that would be more starting now more of our practice um, <clears throat> and yes the the dialogue the conversation needs to occur uh, especially like I said post COVID it's the the landscape out there has changed to to even before I got here 10 years ago, you know, I we would not seen this much activity before. I would say in my uh, 23 plus years as a planning commissioner, I've never seen the sheriff here. And uh, so, you know, it just tells you that this is a, a nuisance, so. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, we, through all of uh, the times I've sat here, I don't think we've seen a case quite like this one. But uh, again, I think, uh, I don't know what it is. I think we're we're seeing more of it. Um, so and maybe it's the cash cash maybe the inflate. Yeah, you know, but those were like one or two a year. You know, there might be five or there's five or six in this this area alone. And so getting and defining all of those is is difficult, uh, whether they're commercial or not. Um, but yeah, if you're <coughs> not able, if especially if they're non-commercial and you're having this many issues, why uh, Why would we as the commission or as the RMA want to um, look to approve a project that would allow you to have commercial, which has large, larger ramifications, you know? So again, that <clears throat> that's being discussed right now and uh, we'll, we'll see where it comes out, but I, I think you'll see an ordinance moving forward. Thank you. So this site goes dark, No, and, and so that's what we're we're looking to achieve. And again, you know, <clears throat> you go out on a code call, you investigate, and we'll be looking to see if the the fix is to. I mean, if you've already had twelve events this year, why are we going to give you another twelve? If you've already had four events this year, why are you going to give you another four? Again, if if it's one in an area. Not a big deal, but if you start having five or six in a given area, it, it does become a much bigger deal if you're having 24 parties and nobody has a permit. So, anything else? <clears throat> well, I could talk about adaptation or res resiliency, but I think you've heard enough about it. So, uh, I'll just leave it at that today. But uh, I, I did want to make sure the commission is aware of that. The one thing I did also want to correct is. Um, <clears throat> I, I had thought that all of the GSAs had had are, are in line with that, and that's not that's not true. There's there's two that haven't quite uh, bought into the, our process yet. So there are somewhere between 30 and 40 uh, well permits that are still kind of outstanding. But uh, haven't heard too many rumblings. But the the larger GSAs have all come come into uh, <coughs> doing doing our our process. So just to Make you all aware. Belmont, that uh, letterhead still has Pearson as the vice. What does it say? So I don't, I don't even know who the vice is now. You are. So probably want to change that. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, then we'll go ahead and uh, adjourn this uh, meeting and report back July 27th, July 27th. Thank you all very much.